She is such a lousy wife. All she does is hang around the house and doesn't lift a finger. At a family gathering, Jason, my husband, who's hardly around since we tied the knot, said. His relatives would jump in with, That sounds terrible. Some wife she is. Feeling backed up, he even added, She can't cook to save her life and the house is always a mess. Makes me not want to come home. That really got me. After the way you treat me, you have the nerve to say that in public? I shot back. And what home are you talking about? You no longer have a house to come back to. The relatives and he were both caught off guard by my response. I ended the lease a week ago. But don't worry, I stored all your stuff. Guess you wouldn't know since you're hardly ever home. You did what? He gasped. His dad jumped in. Hold on, what's happening here? Jason was in for a rough time. My name's Susie, and I'm a 32-year-old married lady. My folks own a mid-sized factory. Dad's the big boss, and Mom manages some of the part-timers. Being their only kid, they doted on me a lot. After college, I snagged a job in accounting at a big car company. I'm kind of shy, so when I hit 30 and was still single, my parents got a bit anxious. They suggested a few arranged marriages, but nobody clicked. Just as I was about to call it quits, Dad introduced me to the son of a business buddy. Out of respect, I decided to meet him. That's how I met Jason, who'd be my future husband. He was involved in his dad's business, but at a different company. I was charmed by his manners and sweet smile. Turns out, he felt the same and invited me out. After a few dates, he popped the question within six months. Elated, I said yes, and our families were in the loop. My parents were thrilled. Susie, we're so happy. Jason, you better look after her, they beamed. Joining forces with an important business partner would be a boost for Dad's company. We then visited Jason's folks. Their place was swanky. His mom, Mary, who's on the city council, warmly said, We were worried about Jason being single for so long. Glad he found you. She was kind-hearted, but super energetic. Jason's dad, Scott, chimed in. In our business, family ties are crucial. Welcome aboard, Susie. Take care of her boy. He was a bit intimidating, but it was comforting that they were on board with our wedding. Soon after, Jason and I made it official and celebrated with a ceremony. One catch was that I'd become a stay-at-home wife. Work keeps me on my toes. I'd like you to run the household, he'd said. I responded, sure thing. I'll make sure everything's in tip-top shape at home. With his solid paycheck and generous wedding gifts from both families, settling into the housewife role wasn't a big deal for me. My friends would often rib me, saying, being a housewife with all that free time sounds like the dream. After getting hitched, Jason turned down his folks' offer to get us a condo. He wanted us to pick out a rental that feels right for us. I started thinking maybe it was best not to lean on his parents too much. I respected his call and was on board. When he started looking for a place, he said, I'm buried in work right now and can't help hunt for an apartment. Mind handling that and getting the lease sorted? You're sure about this? Absolutely. Find something you like and I'll just move in. So I set out solo, picked an apartment and got everything set up. Once we were married, we shifted into our new place, ready for that honeymoon phase. But that bubble burst real quick. Jason was barely around. He'd burn the midnight oil on weekdays and be out the door at the crack of dawn. On weekends, he claimed work dragged him in. He often jetted off for business trips, too. My days became a loop of chores and waiting. I'd whip up dinners only for him to say, grab something out, and hit the hay without eating. It felt like he was just crashing at our place between shifts. I was starting to question our whole setup. Was this married life? I wanted to be there for him, but this was a bit much. Three months post-wedding, I finally brought it up. You can't be this slammed all the time. We never hang out. He shot back, looking wiped out. I'm swamped. Can't you see I'm beat? I get it, but... If you get it, then cut me some slack. Grinding to keep us comfortable. He snapped. 
I was at a loss for words. Sure, he gave me plenty for our bills. Given that he was providing for me, I had to bite my tongue. Christmas was around the corner, so I asked. Got any family stuff for Christmas? Shouldn't we swing by your folks' place? No, I'll be working. And they're usually traveling. You positive? I told you, it's all good. Sent them their gifts and cards already. He said, a tad annoyed, and ducked into our room. I was left standing, speechless. But post-Christmas, I got a ring from Scott. Hi, Susie. He began. Hi, it's been a while. You think? Why'd you skip our Christmas get-together? I was thrown for a loop. I told you family's important to us. You're family now, you should have been there helping out. My mind went blank and I didn't know what to say to his sudden remarks. I had no idea that there was a family gathering and I thought they took a holiday trip. I'm sorry, Scott, but I was told. Save it. From what my son's been saying, it seems like you're slacking at home. Excuse me? I've been on top of the housework, and considering how little Jason's around, did he seriously complain about that to his dad? Listen, you wanted to be a housewife, so you've got to pull your weight at home. Clear? Scott added, sounding stern. All I could muster was a quiet, yes. That evening, I had to have a talk with Jason. He told me there was no Christmas gathering. Why'd I get chewed out over it? Did I? Maybe you misunderstood. No, I heard you loud and clear. I would have gone if I had known. And if there was an issue with my housekeeping, you should have come to me before running to Scott. I snapped, holding back tears. He scoffed. You probably just chill at home and now you're kicking up a fuss? What? I work hard at home when you're not around. He dryly retorted. I bet you're just burning through my money. And with a cold glance, he left. After that, he became even more elusive. So elusive that he actually stopped coming back home. He was always out with just the vague work text as an excuse. His absence was suspicious. Trusting my gut that he was keeping something from me, I hired a detective using my pre-marriage savings. Thanksgiving rolled around soon. While I was handling chores, I got a call from Scott. Susie, we've got a Thanksgiving gathering. Make sure you're there. All right, I replied, then promptly called up Jason. He answered, sounding less than thrilled. Your dad mentioned a Thanksgiving thing. Oh? Don't bother showing up. Excuse me? With how you handle the house, I can't show you off. I'll go, but you should stay put. He ended the call abruptly. A few days later, there I was, outside his parents' place, hearing the lively chatter of a family event. I rang the doorbell and a surprise Mary met me. Didn't expect to see you. I just nodded and walked in. Immediately, the room buzzed. Ah, oh, the bride's here. Heard you're not big on housekeeping. Been a minute since we last saw you. Scott shot me a disapproving look. Jason mingling with the family looked floored to see me and quickly averted his eyes. As I assisted Mary in the kitchen, I overheard Jason's conversation in the living room. How's married life, Jason? Uncle, you're looking right at it. What's that supposed to mean? She's such a lousy wife. All she does is hang around, the house, and doesn't lift a finger. He lamented, his voice rising. The room chimed in with their critiques, fueling Jason's complaints about my cooking and housekeeping skills. She can't cook to save her life and the house is always a mess. Makes me not want to come home. That was it for me. Bursting into the room, I challenged. After the way you treat me, you have the nerve to say that in public? I faced Jason head on. And what home are you talking about? You no longer have a house to come back to. The relatives and he were both caught off guard by my response. Wait, what do you mean? What's this no home talk? He asked, visibly confused. I calmly replied. I ended our lease a week ago. But don't worry, I stored all your stuff. Guess you wouldn't know since you're hardly ever home. Yep, I'd called it quits on our lease and started a life on my own. You did what? He gasped. His dad jumped in. 
Hold on, what's happening here? Jason, still reeling, was speechless. Facing Scott, I explained. Jason's barely been home since we got hitched. He's never even had my home cooked meals. For months, he's been MIA. Raising an eyebrow, Scott asked, What? So, where's he been all this time? I responded, He's been staying with his other woman. Whispers spread among the relatives. Visibly flustered, Jason fired back. That's a lie. I've been working late. Dare to accuse me of such a thing? Scott, seemingly taking his son's side, chimed in. He's denying it, right? Susie, why would you end the lease without discussing it, and then throw out wild accusations? Some in the room added, She's out of line, poor guy. That's when I decided to show my hand. I pulled out an envelope and shared its contents, pictures proving his affair. There he was, with another woman, clearly more than just friends. Scott took a closer look at the evidence. Holding my ground, I told Jason. I hired a PI to get these. Care to explain? As the photos scattered, he looked like he'd seen a ghost. This isn't what you think. He started, but then Mary, joining the fray, told him. Jason, spill it. He sighed. I've been with her since before we even met. She's someone from a club. I love her. More whispers. I asked, so you never came home because you were with her? Then why even marry me? My parents would never have approved of her. Marrying you, a subcontractor's daughter, seemed the right move. Fuming, I continued. Why tarnish my name to Scott and the relatives? Easier divorce. I wanted her, not you. Just needed a plausible reason. As I was about to retort, Mary slapped him. Mom! He cried out. She yelled back. How? Could you do this to Susie and to our family? Scott stood. You're a disgrace to our family. You're cut off, Jason. What? What about the company? You? Take over? Don't even think about it. Say sorry to Susie. He then pleaded. Please, help me out here. I countered. No way, we're done. And I expect a big payout. Have fun with your girlfriend, you jerk. He then left sobbing with Scott and the relatives. Scott and the rest apologized profusely. He confirmed. We'll keep our business ties with your family. So I decided to let it slide. Our divorce was quick, and the alimony was generous. Scott and Mary also paid me $50,000 for the hassle. As for Jason, he was disowned, lost his job and company standing, and he even got dumped by his mistress. Word is, he's now in a dingy apartment, jobless. Hearing that, I feel zero pity. It's karma. I'm back at work financially stable thanks to the divorce, and I've got Europe in my sights. From now on, I'm living for me.